Oh yeah, folks, we're back. No weeks off, nothing. And we got a big old star for you. It's David Dobrik. And let's look at the thumbnail I made for his episode. I always create a new logo custom for the guest. And his is made out of a big old stack of dry ice blocks. That's because he and I have done some reckless crap with dry ice. You're going to hear all about it. It's Wild Ride. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, David Dobrik. Yeah, dude. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. Um, I, it's a, it's an honor. I've been essentially begging you to do this, and and uh, thank you so much for for doing. It. You've always been so good to me, and uh, you're like, I'm trying to think of somebody who came out of of YouTube. I mean, I suppose you could count with the the Vine origins. But right. that, but who has had such incredible like mainstream crossover coming out of YouTube? Like it's, well, it's I appreciate it's, that. It's pretty remarkable, man. I mean, of course, everybody knows who Logan Paul is, you know, and Jake Paul as well. But you know, without putting those guys down, they're more infamous than famous. It's it's sort of negative scandals that sure. have given them the the mainstream attention, <clears throat> and. It's just like, uh, I can't think of a time when I've heard anything even remotely negative. Have you ever had any kind of a scandal? Have I ever had a scandal? Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely been times where like, I, like things have come up that like I've tweeted before when I was like really young and stupid. And, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I always think that's such like BS when like someone gets like shit for something they tweeted five or six years ago because that's like, you know, I was I was in high school and I was saying the stupidest shit ever. Like there, there's sure. half of half of my vocabulary that I used to say in high school. Like I do not say anymore. And it's just people grow. But um, unfortunately, that, you know, everyone gets to see me do it um, online so that that can have some that right. can have some repercussions. But but yeah, I'm learning from it just like everybody else. And I know I will. I know I'm definitely going to have some sort of scandal <laughs> in the future. I don't know what it is, but right. I know it's coming <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and apologies if I just drew attention to some negative stuff that's going to give you a <laughs> headache, man, because if there's anything I can't stand, I've been largely, oh, no. I've been largely scandal free, you know, like there's, there's, very, you know, even all of my extensive uh, criminal arrests, I mean, sure, I'm not proud of the drunk driving, you know, back in the 90s and right. felony cocaine possession isn't something I'm really like proud of, <laughs> but hey, that's Long my list. It's my past, you know. That's that's where I come from. That's like uh, what made me who who I am. And like, uh, totally. Did they have Twitter back then? When, <laughs> no. when you, thank God they didn't have Twitter in 07, oh 08. Yeah. Plus, I've been clean and sober since uh, the video camera became like a part of everybody's fucking wardrobe. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Right. right. But, but yeah. Yeah. So it, it's so interesting. It's like. It's, I, imagine if yeah imagine if you grew up with twitter and like just back in the day it's crazy oh how like God. like <laughs> if, you, if you used to go to parties and people didn't have like cell phones on them and they couldn't record everything and like things were like kept a secret but now like you can, you know you do one slip up no matter who you are and there's somebody across the street recording you or something right so like everything is a lot more like scrutinized which is good in some way but also like it's harder. It's harder to learn from your mistakes when it's so public and like everyone's giving you shit for it. Right. When I was in high school, we had those disposable Kodak cameras, and so you know you take a picture and you <laughs> take a picture. It's like right. thank God those, those didn't are, record. Those right. have those are coming back though. Like I have like I I've been using I use like the Fuji film disposable cameras, and I started an Instagram page um, called David's Disposable, and it's all. It's all disposable pictures and they're like making like a serious comeback because people, my friends would like, they'd have like these big parties and they'd put like a hundred of them out on the tables and then everyone got super fucked up and drunk and they would all take pictures and in the morning they would just collect all the cameras and then there'd be all this like basically fucking nudity and pornography on all these fucking sure. cameras when they got them developed and no one remembered any of it. Incredible. And like, I think that's really cool. So they're making a comeback. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have a streak going, it's a little bit of a tradition on this podcast that I, seven for that seven. I, I never introduce <laughs> my co-host Scott Randolph. How you doing? Minute. Good to see you again. I was just <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> I have a tradition. <laughs> it's a tradition. I always just pretend he's not there. Um, actually for the first time we've got uh two, co-hosts in the van uh in arguably even more attractive paul wow. brisky over here hey we call wow. him young cunt 
And uh, oh, I wish I could see you. Yeah, I'm what's up, David? So you can't see me. I'm yeah. off camera. He's up at the front. Could you lounge. hear his voice? How sexy it is. Yeah, David, how you <laughs> doing, voice, man? That's, his voice sounds better than than all of us combined. So yeah, <laughs> I do have high hopes for how you look. Paul, uh, Paul you want to you want to just creep up here and let let him get a look at you. All right, you I'll come wave quick. to you, David. Yeah. Can you get in? A yeah. And, and uh, speaking of sexy, we you had John Stamos in the car recently. Uh, how how God, hot I, is he? <laughs> oh yeah, the voice matches the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, John Stamos, I think is is one of the most interesting people because. He's like he's he's John Stamos. There's no way to describe him, but right. like like he will go out into public and like just the way he interacts with people, it's always like he's in a sitcom. Like he's like he will forever be that good looking guy. Like even like when he we went to like Universal Studios for like five minutes and I remember him like interacting with the person that like was valeting our car and it was like it, like it gives you butterflies in your stomach because it's so <laughs> interesting watching such a beautiful human right. just like take on the world. Like life has to be a lot easier for John Stamos for sure. because how the hell does he look like that at his age? It makes no sense. I know he's People <laughs> Magazine's sexiest man alive for every single year since People Magazine started. <laughs> yeah, he, he has a better working, streak going I, than Rob Lowe probably. Rob Lowe, I don't see. I don't even know about Rob Lowe. All I know is John Stamos. I John came to one of my shows in Chicago. I would do like these podcast shows, and my mom met him. And I've never seen my mom like put on this kind of behavior. It made me so <laughs> uncomfortable. Like genuinely, she was like, you could tell that like right in front of my dad, she was like Thirsty. experiencing these things that like <laughs> just being around John Stamos for the first time. It was so bizarre, and I was like, holy shit, this man has superpowers like yeah. that making my mind yeah he's the real like deal that. celebrity yeah, that probably happens to him daily 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. yeah so so I, I'm, I'm interested like you, you hang out with like these in, incredibly like superstar personalities i've never had like really a scandal if you get down to it you know there's never been any negative publicity surrounding you but you're not like going out of your way to be particularly squeaky clean or anything right i mean you're you're that like hey right. youtube i'm throwing three pounds of weed like hey, it will... totally yeah i don't know i think it's like i there's there's ways to there's ways i i feel like my videos and like everything i portray online like i try to be as 110 percent authentic as i could possibly be and yes that'll sometimes involve you know, me being mean to my friends or, you know, making fun, you know, making fun yeah. of my friends or there's some weed involved or we're doing some kind of a little stunt in the backyard. Yeah, it's definitely it, it definitely rides like the edge of it. But um, but I feel like I have a good group of friends around me that like know like to like when I should like tone it back or like when, OK, David, like calm down. And I've just learned so much. I learned so much from other people's mistakes, too. So like seeing other people on the Internet, like fuck up and, and say certain shit that they shouldn't or like you know, make videos about certain things like that. Like I, I take all of that. Like that's the best to learn from other people's mistakes because you get all the learning and you don't get the you don't get the backlash of making the mistake. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Dude, I'll tell you this, man. Like uh, it's been such a, it, it, like such a, such an honor, such a privilege, and such a help to have been in uh, a number of your videos. It, I, dude, I, don't don't even say that. Why Stop not? It. I mean, dude, I mean it because like, here, here's the thing. Um, like I, I, there are very few things I've appeared in that have inspired people as I walk through my daily life to comment about it. Like, dude, I saw you in David Dobrik's vlog. I mean, it's up there with being on the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, like when, and, and both. But I mean, back in the day when I was on Howard Stern all the time, that would be a big one. Uh, but dude, not compared to being on David Dobrik's vlog or or the Joe Rogan experience, and it's just it's just badass, man. And 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 people who bring up your your vlogs so frequently, what's David Dobrik like? What like what's he what's he like? I'm like you know that that's him. You know, I mean, I think that right. I, you know, I think that there's like a, a you know a. It, objectively i think that you know like when, when we're talking away from from cameras I, like it, you're you're like laser focused and you know but then again that reads in your vlogs too you know so right 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 i i have uh, one of the most interesting interactions i've ever had with a celebrity was i feel i feel like it was you 
I'm not going to argue with David because I am an interesting guy. And the story he's about to tell you is fantastic. Also, super crazy is the discussion we have about the dangers of showing your house to a massive audience because it tends to end up with really creepy, weird people showing up at, or in David's case, inside your house. So I'm just a maniac to be standing here right in my bedroom on camera, but I don't care because I want you to see my mattress. It's so killer from Helix. Yeah, that's the reason I look so darn good, because I've been sleeping like a champ. And here's what I want you to do. Take their little quiz, right? Go to helixsleep.com slash Devo. Couldn't be easier, just a couple minutes. You fill out this quiz and they're gonna tell you what the perfect mattress is for you. And trust me, they got it right for me. I love this thing. And at helixsleep.com slash Devo, like by using that with the slash Devo, you get up to $200 off any one of their mattresses any mattress and if you do that here helix pillow dopest pillow in the world they give you two of them for free if you buy any mattress so i'm just saying you got nothing to lose take that sleep quiz at helixsleep.com slash devo get yourself a killer deal because you deserve it and that is the best mattress ever now when you came over, we were doing dry ice in the backyard and you came over. I think you had like flip flops on. You brought your dog and you just looked like you looked like a neighbor from across the street that was just interested in what we were doing. <laughs> and, and I remember I remember you were just sitting in a lawn chair as we were putting the dry ice like around the pool. And like as a joke, I came over to you and I was like something about the roof. I was like, hey, you should. I was like, when are you going to jump off that roof? And your response to me was like. Well, I'm a little worried about the shingles because I may slide right off of it. But I feel like if I go around the back and like, <laughs> oh, like you went straight into like Steve-O mode. And I was like, what? Because like the way the way you were like presenting yourself when you first came, I was like, oh, he's just coming to hang out. And then literally 10, 15 minutes later, you're you're doing the front flip off the roof into a pool that you can't even see because there's so I, much dry ice. It was so I thought, funny. I, I told that story to so many people because I thought that was so interesting. Dude, that shit was so <laughs> creepy. I mean, it was so creepy to jump into a pool that you can't see that I actually, like, kind of, in my view, ruined the whole thing because I waited until the, the whatever it's called, off dry ice, steam, smoke, whatever you want to yeah. call it. I waited until it dissipated enough for me to actually be able to see the pool. Because you pushed out? I fucking pushed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you did that. So you, you do this thing where you count um, from three. Yeah, one, two, right? three, go is my, my routine for stunts. One, two, three, go, right? And like, and you told me about your rule where you go one, two, three, go. And the second you start counting, you've never backed out never, from any stunt. Never once. Never. Never once. Never once. It's, it's the same <laughs> so, thing with that. And it's like, so on my videos, we never do like stunts like you do. Like we'll do like very minimal things, like the smallest of like little bits. And like every time someone's scared to do something, I'm like, dude, do what Steve-O does, <laughs> count to three, go and just do it. And <laughs> everyone goes one, two, three, go. And then they go, oh, okay, okay, one, two, <laughs> no, one, no one can follow what you do. I think ah. that is, and it's the best that, that you have that set up because it's like, it's bulletproof at this point. Like you, right. you've mastered it. I think that's When so was cool. the first time you did that? Oh, shit, man. I mean, early on, I was very one dimensional as a performer. Um, I would uh, only jump off roofs and buildings. So it was just on, on <laughs> rooftops, like jumping into pools. So when you're like 12 years old, you're like, I'm going to uh, do it like, like when was the more first like, time? More like when, it, it, I got serious about becoming a stuntman as I failed out of the University of Miami. So like 18, 19 years old would have been the, the origin of one, two, three. That's when it became yeah. a thing? For sure. So, but dude, let, let me correct you there if I if I may. There, yeah. like uh, You say we do very minor, small stunts like... I mean, maybe like uh, as far as like physical bodily harm and you know, maybe, but dude, the stunts you do are fucking massive. Like, uh, for example, we had a we had a meeting <clears throat> um, to to come up with ideas for 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 Jackass, and I, I I'm pretty comfortable saying this because we determined that it was not doable. But but your video was uh, was presented as like, what can we do with this? And it was uh, was like the the goop the 
It was like just an, expl oh, yeah. an explosion of like foam. What, what was that? Right. Right. Yeah. It was, um, it was elephant toothpaste basically. So it's like hydrogen peroxide and like dishwater. They blow up and it like, it foams out and it, it died. My entire backyard right now is still dyed green because anything it touches, you cannot repaint over because the chemicals will just see past it. So my, my backyard's green still because of it. But yeah, yeah. So that, that got brought up in a meeting. Yeah, yeah, and it becomes like physically hard, right? Like there's, you know, the, the no. Oh, it doesn't. Maybe it gets no, hot it, or something. It get, it's hot for the first like millisecond it comes out of the tube, and then and then the second it like flies away, you you can literally swim in it after like it touches the ground. Oh, oh okay. So I, that's really interesting, and I remember this is. This is such bullshit. I have like a neighbor like that lives a couple houses down that like just hates the fact that there's a YouTuber living on the street. Um, so I remember we did that experiment and the police came like a month later saying that this guy basically wants to sue me because when I did the elephant toothpaste experiment, um, a part of like the toothpaste landed on his wife while she was in the hot tub and burned her. And, and 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 I knew that that was bullshit. So we like looked at the drone footage, and not only was there no one in his hot tub, but the hot tub like had a cover on it. And on top of that, even if the foam made it to her, like it wouldn't have like done anything with her. And that, that that's like a fun story that came out of that that like pisses me off. Like I hate when people just like yeah try to ruin somebody's day for no reason just because they're bored. Well, it's more than um, that. It's just a question of uh, honesty, man. Like honesty, integrity, decency. I think those right. are like three. And and the guy was being dishonest and malicious. So yeah, I, I'm angry too. <laughs> I do want to. I I do want to say. Um, I do want to say though, like some sometimes people will come up to me and like they'll describe my videos to like a stranger right in front of me, and they'll be like, it's sort of, it's sort of like jackass meets this and and i'll always go i'll go like no like i we don't do anything that dangerous like dude like none of my friends would be able to repeat any like if i put bees in a limousine my right. my friends would never talk to me again i would love to do it but they would never look in my direction and like it's i i just feel like it's uh, I'm doing like every time someone compares me to Jackass, they're like doing a a disservice to to I, Jackass I and everything that you guys. I, I get it. I get it. I, I get it. And uh, I'll give you more credit than that. I think that the, the spirit of what you're doing is just so like just wild. Right. It's it's wild, you know. And uh, and and it's wild. And I think what what makes it really kind of works so well and why you've been so successful at least part of it is that you're able to not take yourself very seriously and i think that that's right. like the, the that's like the backbone of what made jackass work because we weren't like a bunch of macho guys like oh yeah like trying to look cool like we were okay with not looking cool you know and there's something yeah. there's something really endearing about that and i think you possess that big time also you do like like huge scale epic stuff you know and and i'm so interested um i like i was checking out the the going through the car wash in a convertible and we did that right right we did that on yeah. jackass where i was on the hood of the car like in my uh, oh, in my cheetah print yeah. bikini and they drove it through the car wash but but before doing that go through the car wash thing and by the way going through in a convertible is just classic i mean that's such a notch above jackass so and Wait, that, i thought you guys did convertible no no, no no i was I, on I the feel like seen, I, I feel like i've seen the car wash convertible thing done like like a bunch of times, and I, and I knew it like originated from one of you guys. It didn't. I was on the hood of my car, which was a big grand marquee. It was totally not a convertible. So you stepped it up I, like humongous. No, I think being on the hood is a lot scarier because when those things come down and they're going, I mean, like right same, on the hood. same difference, except that you put the the car like with it's the the entertainment of it is, you know, the fact that the car is being filled with soap and and water. But right. the thing was, before we did the car wash, they, they, they didn't like whatever. They do some research, and they were like, "Whoa, maybe the car wash people said, you, you there's chemicals in there that that you can't spray on your body." So before we went, before they drove me through the car wash, they like disabled a bunch of the jets that had the crazy chemicals in it. And I have to know if if you guys just took the chemicals. Like, uh, <laughs> what? 
<laughs> There's another scandal right there, dude. <laughs> did I? Did, yeah. Did I contaminate my friends for the rest of their lives? <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I, I remember we were kind of friends with the car wash lady. And she was just like, yeah, go for it. But she was super cool about it. So I think right. she'd know about chemicals. The funny thing was we, we didn't have a convertible. So we looked on Craigslist for like a cheap one. And instead of buying it, we, we just told the lady, we're like, we're going to run it through a car wash. Can we give you 400 bucks and just give it back to you? Wow. And, and she, yeah. And she was like, okay. So she sat outside the car wash as we took her convertible through the car wash and gave it right back to her after. And that was it. Dude, so that's, it's perfect. That's, that's incredible. <clears throat> um, yeah. Which brings up like the, the, the most burning question. You got to love David Dobrik because when you put him on the spot, he delivers with honesty. And I'm going to get honest with you now too. A while back, I got fat. And I posted on every social media platform pictures and video of just what a slob I had become. And I got tired of it. So I'm back to exercising. It's going pretty well. I'm already in much better shape, and it's a lot easier when I'm jamming out to tunes while I'm working out. And I made a promise to all of you a while back that if you catch me anywhere, anytime for the next year, and I don't have my Raycon earbuds in my pocket, ears, or both, that I will record your voicemail greeting, a shout out video to your little buddies or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and I don't care about making that promise because I will not get caught with without my Raycon everyday E25 earbuds in my pocket because I love them. They fit right in my ear. I can take on and off my sweaty clothes after my workout and it's not like they're falling out. I can even lay my head on my pillow and it's perfectly comfortable while I'm listening. And they've got buttons to control the tracks, pause, skip track, all that. And like, I don't know about other earbuds, wireless ones that have that. And these are half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds. They sound just as good. They last for six hours, but when you put them back in the case, the case charges them up. So it feels like they last forever. God, I can't say enough how much I love these Raycon earbuds. And if you go to buyraycon.com slash Stevo, you're gonna get 15% off of your whole order. Yeah, that's right, again, 15% off of your whole order if you go to buyraycon.com slash stevo. Just give it a shot, man, because these things are dope. Now, let's get to the burning question. In your videos, what you do in your videos just routinely is just give away cars. Like You're giving away more cars than Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't think I have. She gave it to her entire audience. Right. Well, I, I mean, like, and, and, and I'm not like, it's just, it's just fascinating. And, and, uh, like, like particularly it's, it's interesting that, uh, and you've only put up one video on your main channel since the, uh, the coronavirus shutdown, which right. is, it strikes me as a little bit of an interesting, uh, counterintuitive decision because in the coronavirus shutdown, it just seems like everybody's got more time to be watching YouTube videos. I think views totally. are up and like, you know, you know, like people could use the entertainment. I mean, I know that I've been like considerably more active in digital. Right. Yeah. So the reason I'm doing that is because, so, um, first of all, I don't hang out. I'm not seeing anybody during this quarantine. And it's like, and, and, you know, I have like when it first started and I got like some serious backlash for, for even seeing my friends who are basically my next door neighbors, which many people don't know. But, um, um, so yeah, so it's tough to make those videos without those guys around. And on top of that, like the way I look at it is like, so Jimmy Fallon, right. Has like moved his show, um, into his into his like bedroom or into his room right, right? and i feel like he can he can do that because at the end of all of this he's gonna bounce back to that studio so even if people don't like this version of jimmy fallon he's gonna be able to go back to that high production quality stuff and people are gonna know the difference they're gonna be like oh jimmy's back but i feel like if i start posting during this quarantine um just by default my content's gonna be so watered down um, just because it's just gonna be me inside my house and people are slowly going to be more and more disinterested. And there's never going to be a moment where they're going to be like, oh, David's back to doing the regular stuff. Right. So I'd rather just like quit cold turkey 
and stop. And then when I'm able to make the videos I want to make exactly the way I want to make them, then I'll start again. I just don't want there to ever be a time like, is are his videos still like in his bedroom or like is he back to right, doing right, like right. the fun stuff? Is it is yeah. it a nice break for you to take a break from like doing the uploads or or you kind of want to get back to it? It's a little bit of both. Like I I I I. I've never been happier than when I've been, I used to do three a week. That was like the most I was doing. I did for like two or three years. And I was so stressed out. Like I was editing till like six in the morning and then I woke up at 11 to shoot the next one. And I was doing this for, you know, for years. And like, that was the happiest I've ever been. Like being so stressed out where you just like, (laughs) you feel like you're just being squished in a box, but doing something you love is so like, undeniably amazing it's like orgasmic almost like there's no better way to describe it like getting to do what you love and getting to do it so consistently and seeing such positive feedback is like the best feeling yeah i relate Um, to that i got to do that and then i and then i went back to two a week and i remember i remember my friend was like you're gonna feel really weird cutting back on your post and once i did i felt like i had no purpose anymore like i felt like i like i felt like i wasn't part of like humanity and then i like went back and like i was a human again it was really bizarre, like letting up on the gas and I needed to do it, but I'm also kind of bummed I did it. I don't know. Wow, man. Yeah. I, I relate to that so, so much. Like just the, the, the incredible pressure, like people, I, like if somebody asks me, are you happy? And, and, and I say like, like as a person, like, like pretty much no, you know, like, no, I'm not fucking happy because, uh, <laughs> you know, be, because like if I was happy, I would be like, uh, I don't know. I'd be comfortable. I'd be content. I'd be like, like, no, like I have this, like this built in, like discontent, like I, this bit, this ambition, like I want, like, I want to accomplish so much that it's impossible for me to be happy. And kind of the closest I get is the satisfaction of being unhappy, but like working, you know? Right. And, and, and I don't think totally. I work nearly as much as, I mean, I, I work quite a bit, but, but yeah, dude. No. Um, yeah. And there's something so special about like, about like finishing a project and then and like you know people are watching that while you're making the next one like there's something that feels so good about that like there's people consuming this and i'm here working on the next one that people don't know about yet that people can be excited for like i that that's just like an unbeatable feeling and i'm sure you guys are well aware of that for sure and 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 when you're dealing in in digital content it's like there there's analytics there's like how it performs it's like when people have a movie opening at the box office you have like you know a box office open you find out how you did and but we like totally it's crazy i want to ask about like all the the stuff that that you give away but like uh, but before that just your philosophy of youtube is is really fascinating because for all the people out there i don't want to name names but they drive me nuts with their like 20 minute long video and nothing happens it's like the 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 title of the video promises something like really outrageous the thumbnail is equally misleading and then it's 20 minutes that you have to sit through to find out that it it wasn't even true (laughs) it was like Uh, you know totally and, and and contrary to that, your videos are all like seemingly randomly four minutes and 20 seconds long. And there's yes. more shit loaded into your four minutes and 20 seconds. It's almost frustrating. They're like, fuck, you know, <laughs> like you get David Blaine over to your house and that gets like 30 seconds. And it's like shit that other That's people what... would make, you know, they would, other That's... people would be like, this is the 20 minutes of gold. That yeah, never... they'd do like a series of David right. Blaine at the house. I was I was just talking to David Blaine about that. David was like, "Well, first off, let me say this. I, I filmed with John Stamos. I, we went to Warner Brothers and uh, we went on a lot and we drove around. Like he was in the he was like the tour guy, like giving a tour to like all these fans of Warner Brothers, whatever. And we filmed for like three four hours. And I posted the video and I used like anywhere between fifteen to twenty seconds <laughs> from that from filming for four hours. And John calls me and he goes, "What the fuck?" He was so confused. He's like, that's it. He wasn't mad, but he was just like, where's the rest of it? And I was like, well, th- that was the best moment. Like that interaction was like the moment I want to keep. Like I want to highlight that moment. And like, you know, hang out with John Moore. He like realized like that, that's, that's the way to do it is the best. Um, but I was talking to David Blaine too about this. And he was he he's he just finds digital media so interesting because because like back then he was he was telling me how like he could come out with the special 
and he could coast off that for like a year or two. Right. Like he can like that is his thing. Like that's his baby. That like for two years, people will be like, oh, yeah, David Blaine did this, did this. But now when you post something, you have like four hours <laughs> of people talking about you. And right. then it's like their brain is occupied by something new. And it's so, so crazy how fast it's moving. Right. Now. I mean, to 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 that point, like the, it used to be called uh, overexposure. If you showed up too frequently and too much stuff, it was a bad thing. Like we have right. not used the word overexposed as like a, a term of celebrity as, ever. Yeah, like, there's no such thing. As, now. Yeah, there's no such thing as overexposed. But it's just it's just crazy how I remember I had no idea when we did this this stunt. The first time was I jumped off the roof into the the dry ice, which which was it was pretty cool. It was fun, and you know I'm not gonna beat myself up for being too much of a wimp. But then, <laughs> uh, I forget who reached out to who, but I wanted to do. Uh, Something or other. One, we decided we were going to film it again at, at some point. And Blow I was like, shit up when we met us. That right now, but that was after. The next time, we were like well, somehow we determined, okay, let's get together and make a video. And I was like, okay, dude, I'll buy a hot tub. So I bought like this $8,000 hot tub and uh, jumped off the roof of my house. But th my plan was that I was going to fill the, the hot tub with dry ice. You know, like almost like a, I don't even know why I was thinking that, but like, I, I was like, oh, before we put the dry ice in, let me do a test jump just to make sure, you know, test it out. You know, see what it's like before I can't see the fucking thing. And like, and it was that like, that's going to make like the, 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 my worst injuries ever video. Like that was like jumping, wow. jumping off the roof of my house into that fucking hot tub is among the worst injuries. That you probably I've... broke your butt. Dude, it yeah, was did you ever so... get x rayed for that? And, and the thing was, I was like, oh, okay, fuck, okay, so we'll just make it, we'll, we'll, we'll change the idea. I didn't get x rayed for that, no, but um, I was like, we'll change the idea so that the purpose of jumping in the hot tub was just to get me wet for the slip and slide. And I'm trying to tell him how to film his video, like, oh, but we'll do this. And David, David's like, no, really, I don't need that, you know? <laughs> 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 and I didn't get it, but dude, yeah, like to what Scott said, man, what a boss fucking move. And I think that that's why, I, I think that's why you do so well with with your audience because you don't fucking waste their time. You what? know, you're not stretching shit out. I think people genuinely appreciate that, and I try to. Well, it sounds like you know your art a lot. You know, you know exactly what you want, and and you you want to fit it into a you know a certain way of doing things, and you don't I, give a fuck what anybody else says. You know, and you do it. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah the, like the I, best I, way I, I can describe it is like is like on Vine. Uh, I, I came from Vine, so I knew that everyone's attention span was already short, right? Every video was six seconds. So then on YouTube, like, okay, this is how fast everything is moving. So let's say Steve-O, let's say Steve-O um, is going to jump off a roof into fire, right? In, in, in a regular YouTube video and like a, in a regular vlog, you'd have, you'd set it up and then you'd go to the, you'd go to Home Depot and you'd buy <laughs> the logs for the fire yeah. and you'd buy the ladder, you'd show all that. So then in my video, I, I was like, okay, let me just show, I'll, I'll introduce Steve-O and I'll say what he's doing. So th that's what my video is. But now with TikTok, it's gotten so much quicker where I wouldn't even have any time to introduce Steve-O. I would just show him doing it. Like it's gotten that, like people don't even care about the intro anymore. Like I think it's getting so much faster that it's just like, oh, he's jumping. That's it. Like rather than like, hey, this is Steve-O. He's going to jump from that roof and land in that fire. Sure. No time for that anymore. Like it's straight to the action. It's crazy like how much faster and faster and faster things are going because so, of like people's attention span is going out the window. So you're on, you're on TikTok, I take it. Yes. I, dude, are you on? Have you played I, around I just, on TikTok? Dude, it's just too much, man. What the... I, I, like, Snapchat, TikTok, I, Instagram I, stories, I, Facebook Live. Oh, trust me, trust me. You need to be on TikTok. It is perfect for you. It's it's literally it's Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney Channel. It's all of those combined for like the amount of eyes that kids. It has over 1.5 billion downloads. It's the most downloaded app on the entire App Store. That's insane. Over Twitter, Instagram, like it's the place to be, and the algorithm is so good on the app and it's all so funny and it's like it has something for everybody like my 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 home feed it's all it's all just funny videos but then you go to my assistants and it's every single video you scroll past all cats because she loves watching cat videos. oh so it caters so, to you it totally caters and learns everything you like and you don't like so if you spend like a week on it 
the app is going to be completely customized to you and you're going to love it. Like that's, that's all it is. Give it a chance. The guy went on a walk with today. He's like 65. He's like, dude, do you do TikTok? I'm like, no. He's like, I fucking love that shit, dude. I'm like, (laughs) I mean, dude, (laughs) what? Yeah. Like, like David Blaine will send me TikToks and I'll be like, what? Like the fact that David Blaine is sending me TikTok videos of people dancing that he enjoys. I'm like, oh my God, anybody can love this. I mean, dude, I just like, honestly, uh, like what you say carries weight with me. I, I, I believe in, and I think that there you go. I'm going to be on fucking TikTok. I remember I got an account, but uh, I just didn't fuck with it. Well, by so. the time this airs, so everybody can go to uh, Steve-O TikTok. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was Steve-O TV on TikTok. Did you already uh, get it? Uh, I I got it, but I was like, what am I doing? What, 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 what am I doing? But here, like, the back to the YouTube thing. The uh, the like, it's really, really interesting. We're talking about the the philosophies of uh, of sort of digital platforms, and your point about not making videos because you'd be worried that a watered down version of videos that aren't quite as good would be somehow disrespectful that it would bring it would uh, undermine the goodwill that you've built with your audience but right typically the philosophy of YouTube is quantity over quality and so like it's like you know it's interesting that I think there's a lot of integrity in no, I'm not going to put anything out there. And then when I come back, I'm going to come back. But you almost, when you do come back, have to like get the ball rolling and build the momentum all totally. over again. You have to prove yourself all over again. It's like it's like you've never done YouTube in the beginning. You have to you have to win over these people all over again. So yeah, in a couple months when everything resumes, yeah, I'm going to have to put in 140% effort and prove to people that like, hey, David's still fun to watch. Do you and have like, a bunch of ideas is, you've been sitting on? Oh, dude, you know he does. Dude. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no, no. I guys, I cannot explain this to you. There is never I, we have never after a video is done that is all of our ideas thrown into that video. We are completely, completely out. There's no like notepad I have with ideas. It's just all out the window. And for three years when I was doing it, like shit would happen every day, and I was getting so confused. I was like, like so I'd run out of ideas, and then the next day. Um, a guy broke into my house. He was sitting in my living room. So I filmed him and then I ran out of ideas again. And then the next day, my upstairs neighbor at my apartment was throwing beer bottles at people and he threw a beer bottle right at my car and like shit was just happening. There's something about like when you're in it that like the universe is like aligning with you and like giving you shit to yeah. film. Scott but, like, told me about you're, the intruder. I, I saw and you started. Yeah, I saw in the news that he had an intruder. On Yahoo News? Yeah. It no, no, that was. Yeah, that wasn't even it. That was that was just a guy in my backyard. That's normal. But there was one time I walked into my house and there was a guy wearing my clothing from my closet sitting on my couch and he shit all over my living room furniture <laughs> and he took all his clothes off and he was passed out on one of my couches. And I remember like grabbing a knife and grabbing my camera <laughs> and going to film him and then calling the police. And it was just like, it was like this, literally this thing fucking fell in my lap. Was he a there fan? There was another time. Yeah, he's Say a what? fan. But he was a fan? Yeah. No, I think he I think he was just crazy. I live on a dead end. So when like when like crazy people just go for walks, my house is the last house. So they're just like, I gotta go inside. Or, <laughs> or I have to turn around. <laughs> hey, so I'm curious. Situation I'm, I'm curious about you guys. I saw a video clip, I don't know when it was, but you guys were driving the wrong way at LAX airport and you got pulled over. Was that right. you? Yeah, that well, that, that was it was in my idea. No, it wasn't my idea, but it was. Yeah, that was that was a moment. That was literally that was exactly what I'm describing. Like it was like I remember I was going to the airport and I was like, I do not have enough for this vlog. I was so stressed out. I was like, I gotta post this as soon as I land in New York. And I remember Natalie went down the wrong way at LAX and at the end of the wrong way, ran right into a police officer and he turned on his headlights and she got pulled over. And I was like, this is crazy that, that, that this should happen just now. Um, there's like something about, I don't know, there's something about like being in the intensity of it that like so many things are happening around you. But at the same time, you have to be careful and not get lost in it and film like stupid stuff that, that'll get you in trouble. Yeah, did you guys get in trouble for the airport thing or did he like, just get the fuck out of here? Yeah, he was like, get the fuck out of here. And Natalie like genuinely made that mistake and she's a horrible driver. So it was, and it was very evident when she was talking to the police officer. She was like, I'm so sorry I fucked up. Um, so yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> okay, I got a, 
that you said about not having ideas, and I, and I, I relate to that too, but I do have like big ones that I plan for down the road. And when I saw the uh, your, your buddy with the the makeup artist gave him tits, it, it, yeah. it broke my heart because one of my major things on my to-do list is to actually get like full like breast implants, like, you know. <laughs> oh, we didn't do that. That was makeup. I know, I know, I know, breast I know. I know, I know, no. but the thing is that, like, in in my mind, what justifies doing that? I mean, it's a fucking crazy stunt, it's super gnarly. I know that that was just makeup, but I was like, you know, everything that I think is really valuable about it, like all of the gags that you can do, where it's like, you know, you crop out the head, like you guys accomplished that without the actual surgery. And, but, right. but for me, I'm like, I'm just so stubborn. I'm like, nope, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it way down the road later. But that's I mean, funny because getting prosthetics like getting like sorry getting like real like a real boob job that was definitely an idea we had <laughs> and that was one of those ideas that was like vetoed by like everybody in my friend group like are you fucking dumb that was one of those ideas where like <laughs> that's the so friend funny. group steps in and they go yo chill that's not happening you can't do that i got everybody um, saying so, yeah, that to please, me please please do it because i'm so curious how it's gonna look <laughs> everybody everybody's saying that to me no no don't do it and and every one of those people is like in, reinforcing to me that it's an awesome idea well i'm <laughs> like dude i'll set you up with a consultation dude i fucking <laughs> love mom's that a plastic shit. surgeon <laughs> yeah uh, yeah oh, my mom works for the plastic doctor tonight. Oh, dude, it's so fucking hilarious. I was like, hey, we have to, you, you have to like go see a psychiatrist because when you do like a, like a gender thing, I guess, you have to, the, the guy has to check you off and see if you're okay. He's like, my guy's down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, dude, my guy, my, my psychiatrist is all about it. But um, so, so, so we've covered this philosophy that you have of YouTube, just loading it in, packed, just concentrated. And I, I just subscribe to that so much, man. I think that that's so killer. Thank you. And, that uh, means so much. And, and and then this this overwhelming generosity. I mean, with the pace that your videos keep, there are there again. Each one is four minutes and twenty seconds. They're loaded like the you know the the little like glimpse that you get of something happening. And like to that point, you're giving away cars. You see like a glimpse of two cars with ribbons on it. You're like, oh wow, okay, gave away a couple more cars, and it's just like onwards and forward, you know, like. And uh, the last video you put up, which is the only video you've put up since the Corona, uh, you know, shutdown or whatever, the lockdown in that in that video, you start out by giving out uh, PlayStations, EA Sports, like like play consoles. And then and then you go to giving uh like frisbees with like hundred dollar bills taped to them and just throwing frisbees to people and then it turns into ten thousand dollar checks that you're shooting at people through <laughs> a t-shirt can like number one how did you uh how do you make out a check to somebody is it just like you sign it and it says ten thousand dollars and they can write their own name in no so we had so i i, I was i'm on this app called the community app have you heard of it Oh my God! Is this another fucking? Is that where you, yeah? He's like, you gotta do it. <laughs> is that is that where you text no, okay. text Listen, people I'm like, sorry, hey, text I, me? This I find really interesting. It's called the community app, oh. and it's like, yeah, you'll see a lot of celebrities like yeah, be like text, text me. me, and then right. yeah, and then so a, like a little over two hundred thousand people texted us, and they were like, I need help with this, and you can search up keywords in the text, so I can look through all the texts that say help or car or need a ride or need mortgage. So we 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 looked at all the people in our area, like within like a 100 mile radius, because we took an RV, so we went all around California. And then every city we would stop by, we'd have a list of like seven names that needed something, whether it was just to say hello, an Xbox, $10,000, or they need a new car, we made a stop there. And we already had their name, so we could already it. write it on the check. And you so got their cell number. Their name was already on the check. And you got their yeah. cell numbers so you can just text them, hey, meet us here. Yeah, and, and we would text them back and we'd be like, the carrier's here to give you some merch. So we didn't, want, we didn't want them to know that it was like me showing up with like money. So we like told them that somebody's dropping off something just for being like a cool supporter. Um, so that was really cool. Okay. But I remember we did, yeah, we gave a lot of people like $10,000 for mortgage. And I remember that there was a bunch of people we didn't even use. Cause like when you're giving that much amount to people, a lot of times they don't even, they don't react right. cause they don't know how to react sure. to it. So I know that we cut out like a good amount of reactions where people were just like, they 
couldn't find words and it just like it didn't it didn't read on camera right so it is a, it is a really interesting thing to do in the video you're you, you've got the the checks are wrapped in a t-shirt and then you've got the t-shirt and the t-shirt can and and when you shoot at them by the way it looks like totally violent like you nailed them with the, you know, <laughs> like uh Right, which is funny, and then they open it up, and it's like a check for ten thousand bucks, and like the lady starts crying. But then it cuts into almost like a montage. You see, like t-shirts flying, boom, boom, boom. Was every one of those t-shirts like ten thousand dollars? Yes. Oh yeah. my god! So then, so then, uh, all right. So, so then, cars. Then, then we start giving away cars. Like, right? Is do you do you know what the bottom line budget was for that whole video? Um, there's something about when you're like, like, on one. this sounds cheesy, but there's something about when you're like giving back and you're in that situation where there almost doesn't feel like there is a budget where you're kind of just going and you're just like, fuck it, I'll figure it out later. I mean, and I think that that's where we found ourselves. Like we were just like, let's just do it. Let's let's as many homes as we can in these three days. Let's just hit those homes and we'll we'll deal with the consequences of the price later. <laughs> Dude, that's epic. And and then there was the time with the the, the Bumble, the chick. You were like, oh no way! You mentioned Bumble, so let me call the the Bumble CEO and and, and then we'll just start giving shit away. Dude, who are you, bro? <laughs> that was that was the craziest. Yeah, we were in the car, and and my friend goes, yeah, I met my husband, or I met my fiance on Bumble, and I was like, I wonder if I can call Bumble right now and get like money from them, and just for you saying that. And then sure enough. Um, I got a good amount of money from them, and we and I use that on the video. Yeah, I love it. I have a philosophy. Philosophy is such a big word for something so stupid. But I have this like rule where if I ever do anything branded on my channel, um, it always goes towards a surprise of some sort. So like, let's say a brand gives me two hundred thousand dollars, a hundred and ten thousand dollars of it goes towards the surprise, and the rest I keep because of taxes. Right. So. <laughs> The tax is like 50%, right? So so every time there's anything branded on my main channel, it's always going right back into the video. And that makes it so easy for everybody. I'm happy. I get a great video. Person receiving is happy because they get a gift. And the brand is happy because they're part of something cool. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it uh, makes perfect sense yeah. to me because here you are like <clears> – <throat> I mean, not, I, I, I got to get off my knees and stop sucking your dick. But like, it's pretty... <laughs> you do some dick riding over here, dude. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, honestly, I see you on uh, the, you know, sit next to Jimmy Fallon. You know, like you're on the Ellen show, right? Like uh, I, I'm driving down the road and you've, you've got fucking like full, full on billboards. And like it, it's, uh, it's everybody, everywhere I go, people are like, oh, my God, I saw you in David Dobrik's vlog. Like, what's he like? Like, and I'm just thinking, motherfucker, this is like <laughs> the biggest star to come out of YouTube. Like, and, uh, and, uh, and part of me just wants to get jealous. But then but then I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm pretty good at letting, you know, I let go of any of that kind of shit a long time ago. But I'm just fascinated with what a huge fucking star you are. And that's why I bugged you like so many times. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, do my podcast <laughs> what's the and, and i mean it that if there's anything i can do to uh you know to, to make this up to you to like if you want me to to shave all my pubes and and smoke uh, them in a big blunt like i don't i don't I, I, you got you know it. i've been dying for that one i do i will give it it is yours it, yeah it is, no it, Steve, it, it when, is, when this is, is over like i i in, in a perfect world i would have you in every single video because there's there's definitely room for some like i i love having a stunt of some sort in every video imagine a world where every video there's like 20 30 seconds of like just you doing something i would <laughs> fucking kill for that dude well, we dude, can um, and, I mean, and here, here I'm saying, oh, let me make it up to you. I'll do like whatever you want in your videos. When meanwhile, that's the most self-serving thing I could possibly do. <laughs> but just make sure you follow yeah, me at Steven.com. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, you should do like, uh, you know how you smoked all those people out with the with the weed? You should put people's pubes in there and just fucking smoke you out in a room full of people's pubes. Yeah, but, that's that's insane that you guys smoke pubes. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen that. Um, but I remember Steve showed me somebody smoking pubes. Was it you or you actually smoked the pubes? It was uh, smoked it out of your I, hand. I smoked it out of. But, but Danger Aaron was involved somehow. It's been... You showed him that. Yeah, yeah, I showed him the whole comedy special, the the whole gnarly special, yeah. which I Dude, think we that that I I talk about that special that you showed me to my friends. I I know it's like top secret or whatever, but can you please 
send me it so just i can show it to my friends because i keep bringing it up and they're like they really want to see it because it's fucking gnarly thank like you, genuinely like next level like thank like, you dude I you're think watching it and you're like what the fuck we could be as little as like a week or two from finally getting it out like uh the, this huh. direct-to-consumer model like uh, louis ck was known for so uh great Oh my god, dude! Like the, the, your, uh, I remember you showing to you were like, "Oh, dude, let me the, the pube smoking stunt, dude. We got to do it." And I was, <laughs> I was feeling protective of it, but um, but yeah, dude, you got it, man. Let, let's let's do a, a pube bonanza. I've actually been saving my poop, my pubes. I've got like two years of harvesting my own pubes in a Ziploc wow. baggie. And, You're gonna uh, get real fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how high you'll get, but uh, yeah, dude, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. We'll, we'll come up with something good. Yeah, I walked upstairs one day and you and you had this bag of pubes. I'm like, dude, what is that? You're like, oh, I've been saving my pubes for two years. I'm like, bro, I'm with you like every day for the last six years. This is just has been his dirty little secret. I'm like, bro, like, what is that, dude? He just does yeah, shit like that all the time. It's, it, yeah, I mean, hey, dude, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know what to say, but uh, I mean, <laughs> smoke some of it and then sell the rest online. See how much you can get for it. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I've been banging my head against the wall for the longest time because I do genuinely work, you know, and like we've Scott here's my tour manager, you know, he helps me with my YouTube videos and stuff, but like we've been grinding for six and a half years now. It's like just airport, hotel, like it is. It's such. Uh, a fucking awful way to live. Always in the airport. Always could go do the same fucking thing. Groundhog's Day, and working right. so hard. And I look at people like Logan Paul, like people like you know, like just always doing something different and interesting, you know, like and just killing it. And I'm like, fuck, what am I doing right. wrong? You know, like I'm trying to figure out how to be more uh, David Dobrik. More David Dobrik. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't think there's a secret form formula for any of this stuff. I think it's, it, uh, you know, some people upload every day. Um, my buddy Casey Neistat, I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with him, he's a him. YouTuber. He, he did 700 episodes in a row every single day. Do you know what that's like? That's it, he, he would tell me that he'd go to bed at three and he'd, he'd like, uh, he, sorry, he'd go to bed at like, yeah, he'd go to bed at three and then wake up around six every day. Every single yeah. day, and he'd so edit, post, and film. So he'd be editing the vlog that was going up that day as he's filming the one that's going up the next day. And he did that for 700 days in a row. And that was like that was like the method to his madness. And then I did three a week, and you know, then I did one a week, and that worked. And it's like there's no real secret formula for like how much work you have to put into it, or like how often you have to upload. But I think what what the most important part is is just <laughs> making the stuff like top notch quality like that's all it is for it's sure. like that's all it is and the best part about youtube is it's all free so like you really get rewarded for putting super quality stuff up there because people aren't expecting anything and then they see you you know they see you do some fucking great shit that you don't have to go to the movie theater for and they're like fuck yeah like i want to watch this thing forever right. i can just tune in on my so, on my laptop it's so many best. people don't give a fuck they're, oh, it's only youtube they're but dude like i i just tweak man paul the gorgeous guy that's off camera he's my he's our editor you know and and thank god i can edit too so we do it sort of together but fuck we tweak over every little thing like it like the the passion oh, yeah. that we put into it the work we put into these videos that we make is uh is insane and i got i got one more thing that i want to ask you that I'm, I'm legitimately curious about i watched was it architecture design or whatever some fucking thing they do oh. Like, architectural digest architectural digest and basically that's like the modern era of cribs where they they're, yeah. they're it's a youtube channel and it's like a tour of this celebrity's home you know and like in the title it'll say like how much the home costs you know and so and i remember seeing it like uh it had just been uploaded your episode of it they said you know david dobrik's two two point five million dollar mansion you know like Trevor. and i was like well fuck i gotta see this you know like i watched it within like you know a couple hours of it being posted and i remember it had a disgusting number of views i was like, like oh my god like and it wasn't even on your channel like uh but um the the the, the question that i have is I guess you've been pretty like liberal about about showing, you know, like I remember asking you 
because uh, I was so sensitive when you came over and we were filming at the house. I was like, oh, no, we've got to drape this blanket over here. I wouldn't <laughs> want anyone to be able to see the, the house number or anything. Like, And you were like, oh, well, you know, do you have, like, security at your house, anything like that? Like, um, uh, No, <laughs> do you- um, I don't. And it is that is our biggest problem is, like, is, like people coming to the house. We call the police on a guy two days ago because he – so once in a while, people will come. This is like a normal thing for some reason. Some People will come with their bags packed, um, and they've traveled from like a different state, and they're like, I've run away from home. I've given up everything. I just want to work for you guys. And like, and they'll just be sitting there, and we'll, there was one time we had to call a person's parent and was like, hey, your son's here. And the mom was like worried like we didn't know where he was. He's like, yeah, your son's here on our front door. He took a bus here like 16 hours and we had to send him back because it's, it's just it's such a bizarre thing because especially with the videos, people think that they know us because like, right. we let so many people into our lives. So they think they're our friends. So they think they can walk up on our property and it's fucking terrifying. It's the worst. It's, right. the worst. it's, just super, it's super invasive. It's really, really disrespectful. It's really invasive. And like here, I, I know I, mean, I know you well enough that that you like are absolutely as nice of a guy off camera as you are on. I know a hundred percent that if anybody ever comes up to you, sees you in public, that of course you're going to take a picture with them. Of course you're going to bend over backwards to give them a good experience. And I, and I work really hard to be the same way, but it's like at my fucking house, like, like that's the one it's like it's like in my hotel room when i'm on tour and in my fucking house that is like the safe one space. sanctimony safe space like you know and and i reserve the right to not do fucking meet and greets at my house so i right. i was just dying to know if if like you know if you had it to do over again would would you do the the arc, the ad you know, would you would you bring that because it's it's particularly uh, it, it, close to me because I've been weighing around like, do I do a video of like a tour of my house? I'm dying to dude. We've got three goats in our backyard, man. Like we've got fucking animals all over the house. It's hilarious. I feel like a fucking Pippi Longstocking, yep. and I want to show my house, but like I'm 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 scared of bringing like a lot of attention to this. I feel like I can't make that video without saying, hey, before we before I open this fucking door i want to be really clear you're not invited to fucking come to my house i don't want i don't want to get fucking mail at my house i get mail at my house i'm mad i tear it up i throw it away it's not getting read and you're a fucking asshole if you send it <laughs> you know fuck you i don't want to be here if you want to if you want to see me be nice anywhere in the world except my fucking house <laughs> you know? right right yeah no i if I don't have any regret of like of how much I've shown of my life or anything like that, um, especially when it comes to the videos I made. I don't know. It, it's just something you just have to live with. It's like, it's all part of the it's all part of the game, I guess. I mean, that's that's just one fucking huge downside. I had a guy come up to my. This was like uh, before the quarantine. He knocked on my door at fucking 11 p.m. at night. Like I'm on my couch by myself. And it's him and his like two buddies who are like in their like late twenties. Like, are these guys gonna fucking murder me? And they have they have a six pack, and they're like, "You want to come drinking with us?" And I'm like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> like, no." Did you I answer can't. the door? Huh? Did yeah, you- I, I answered the door because I I didn't know what to do. Um, and there's definitely been yeah, there's definitely oh my god, oh my god. The other day, let me t- let me tell you this. The other day, um, I so I live like I live on the corner. As I'm describing where, where I live yeah. exactly. Go ahead and give I us live on the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll look it up. My address is 629 Hudson Bay. Yeah. So I live on the corner, like off a hill. And there was, I ordered a food. I ordered food. Like I ordered Postmates to come to my house. And the driver was coming up the hill. So I was going to go and I was going to go greet him by my front gate. But there was a guy at my, my gate sitting on the hood of his car like right outside with his headlights on, right outside my gate. And I freaked out and I was like, okay, I don't want this Postmates guy coming in, in here in case there's about to be some kind of a fucking shootout. So I called my Postmates guy and I'm like, wait down the street, I'm coming to you. And I was like kind of panicky and he got scared. And he's like, okay, okay, what's going on? So I, instead of going from the front, I ran from the back side of my house. So I went down the hill and it was rainy out. So I slid down the entire fucking hill. I ate so much shit. And then I got to my neighbor's, like my neighbor's house, his backyard. I hopped the fence into his backyard with my phone in my hand. And I didn't realize once I hopped the fence, there would be another hill. And I stumbled 
and I tripped and I, I rolled a couple times down his hill and my phone flew out of my hand into his pool and my phone was cracked so I didn't have any time to waste. So I jumped right into the pool to get my phone. So now I'm fucking drenched in my in my neighbor's pool at like 11 p.m. And then I and then I have to hop his fence to go outside to go onto the main street so I can find my fucking Postmates driver. And I'm fucking soaked. And I'm like, thank you for the food. He is so freaked out. So those are the things I have to deal with. Not that people Man, know where I live. Mission. Yeah, I was gonna ask you um, what you've been doing during the pandemic, but I <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds like I already know. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. If you Steve, if you make that clear in a video and you go, please don't fucking come to my house, it's gonna help a lot more. But just be prepared that there will always be right. a couple people that think that they are the exception. That means that when people do show up, they're really, really gonna be a fucking, you know, amount, a, a fucking handful. I mean, I don't know. That's probably I said it more just like all like in in the moment of like fuck, fuck, fuck. I'll probably find a more articulate and uh, constructive way to convey that message. So, do we want to cut that out of this podcast? <laughs> no, <laughs> fuck no, <laughs> fuck those people. Fuck you guys, dude. <laughs> no. Nah. I watched your I watched your Cribs episode literally four days ago. Uh, I, the uh, one where you're in the apartment in Hollywood. I had a couple out, like, of, out of the apartment in Hollywood. Yeah. But, but the one with Knoxville um, there with all the beer pillars and stuff. Yes, that yeah. one. Bro, that was fucking insane. That reminded me of my apartment. Well, obviously not anywhere close. But like the, the, the ramp you had in the kitchen, <laughs> the, it, it was crazy. And how many how many like shows or movies was this after? Um. That was uh, in conjunction with the release of the first Jackass movie. So the, uh, obviously the shows came first, right? Yeah, I I, I had very very little money, to, you know. Like there, there was, uh, I had a roommate. Dude, that, whose idea I, I thought, was that? I to thought it was like a ramp. sketch. That was mine. I was like, "There's no way." It was like this is like the the perfect Stevo setting in the world. I was right. like, "There's no way this is real." I know the MTV just put that up on YouTube, and I think they put up our whole episode. So Pontius fucking did cribs out of his car. How classic is that? I remember that. He's he's yeah, got the he's got a funny. fucking uh, like a, a cross hanging from the mirror. He's like, "I'm not religious, but I like to hang this from the mirror. It keeps the people from breaking into the car." <laughs> 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 but man, dude, it's so classic, dude. I couldn't be more grateful for you, brother. And uh, yeah, like if, if I can um, smoke pubes, anything to make your videos more uh, entertaining, to get me more attention, <laughs> like whatever. I love everything that we've done together. Uh, I'm grateful to call you a friend, and um, I really, I promise, I won't bug you for favors. You know, this was uh, some... call me whenever. Literally, I you just have to text me once or twice, and then I'll see it. I'm just, I, I, I love doing stuff with you, and I'm, I'm, I seriously mean it. If after this, if there's a way where we could do something like on a consistent basis, I would absolutely I would kill for that. I, I would love it too. And uh, I, as far as like the, the giving stuff away thing, like um, I, I, I've i been saying how I want to uh, you know, get behind some like a, a food drive, the, the, food, the food drives, man. Like it breaks my fucking heart that people can't eat right now, man. Like. It's yeah. and not only they, they can't work, they, they don't have money, they can't afford food, and at the same fucking time, groceries are like skyrocketing in price. So like uh, all of this, like the food drives with thousands of cars and miles long lines, breaks my fucking heart. So that's uh, something that I want to get on to. Yeah, maybe you can come out of retirement during the pandemic and ah, he, dude, do try, he, he's good. He's good. We'll figure it out. Oh. But, but like but like like for a video like that like you helping with the food drives like that's you have such a perfect like brand for that because you can be your own chaotic self around people that need help like that's like imagine imagine you're you know handing a sandwich to somebody at the same time you're smoking a pube and they're laughing at you <laughs> they're having a good time like that's so fun to watch like it's See, so David's fun like, to watch pack it all together you be on brand <laughs> and at the same time I'm helping others like I find that so important like Sure. I love doing charity stuff, but I like I like it when you can see the like the interaction with the person that's receiving it. Because I'm like I'm so weird about charities. Like I don't know where the money's going, and I don't know like right. how it's done at all. Like I'd rather be doing it in person, and and it inspires so many more people to see people do it in person. So like you can definitely put your own fucking cool twist on giving back. Like and it could be so so fun to watch. So yeah, I would. I'd love to see something like that from you. Yeah. Um, but the, well, I think that that's something we, we got to get on, man. And uh, yeah, thank you again. How many uh, podcasts have you done? 
Um, like other people's? Well, no, no, no. You have your own podcast, right? Oh yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. Like a lot. I, through the, I, a lot. I think a lot. We do. We've done one. I'm probably over like 150, 150. Oh wow, so cool. Yeah, we've been we've been doing them for a while. You, you got to come on our podcast. When I would this love is it, dude. I, I, I would love it so much. And dude, thing is there anything that we want to uh, shout out? Like your Instagram? Anything we want to? <laughs> He's like, yeah, um, that's cool. Just check out my podcast. It's the Views Podcast. <laughs> it's uh it's the the Views Podcast, but. Oh, the yeah, Views it's podcast. called Views. V I E W S. Check out super, the super uh, real name. David Dobrik's podcast, The Views Podcast. And dude, <laughs> like, I, I plugged in his fucking name in Google last night, and it was like, uh, it just said David Dobrik, like, main channel YouTube, seven point two billion views. Seven point two billion. That's how many people views. there are on the earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, dude, like, that's that's so. I mean, to put into perspective, like, how many do you have? My main channel has 280 million views. I don't even have, <laughs> I've got like a quarter of 1 billion. He's got seven point. It's awesome, dude. I am such a fan. I am such a fan and so grateful to, to be a bro. So, so, Thank you for having me on and just inflating my ego for the last hour. You've, well, dude. you've, you've, you've really done me justice. No, but I really appreciate you. And thanks for helping out the videos hey, truly what, what, what you're doing is is it's admirable it's impressive it's fucking badass i'm a huge fan and thank you brother fuck dude that means so much thank you thank <laughs> right you guys on, for having dude. me hell yeah brother. <laughs> later dude yeah david peace man all right so maybe i rode his dick a lot but the kid is killing it, and I really like him. And you know what? I really like you, too, for hanging in there until the end of the episode. I, I want to show you extra appreciation this week for doing that. We always do the street team thing where I ask you to screenshot and post it, and I'll like everyone I see, and please thank the guest for a great episode. But you know what? For the street team, I'm going to show you guys brand new brand new here young can grab that brand new <clears throat> wild ride t-shirts and they are available at stevo.com and i'm giving the street team a promo code you know what promo code street team that's uh with two t's all jammed into one word street team and you get 15 percent off uh Screw it. Fifteen percent off the whole damn online store at Stevo.com. Promo code Street Team. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep this deal going. So better hurry up and get on over there. But yeah, dude, I will be so stoked if I see posts of people wearing wild ride t shirts. I'll freak out. Like uh definitely I'll leave a comment on every one of those I see. And for the some people said that they don't uh that I didn't comment or, or like their post. Fuck that, man. I I hit every single one. The problem is if you don't actually tag me where it says tag people, then I'm not gonna see it. Just putting my handle in the caption won't do the trick. You gotta tag me. And, uh, oh, man, if you're wearing a Wild Ride t-shirt, I'll be so stoked. I'm so stoked on you anyway, man. Thank you guys for sticking through to the end. I really love you. Yeah, dude.